Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about the quality of colloidal silver. And over the last 20 odd years I have been asked time and time and time again, what's the parts per million of your colloidal silver? Today I hope to put this to bed. Parts per million is not particularly relevant. In fact, it's, I would argue, the most useless piece of information you're ever going to find out. So let's just talk about making colloidal silver electrolytically. So we have a beaker, and we've got two electrodes in it. And it's full of pure water, that's H2O. There's no other ions in that at all, just water and our two electrodes. And then we pass the current through the electrodes, and we hope that we'll get some uh, electrolytic action across the two electrodes and we'll hive off some particles, which I'm going to talk more about in a second, and we'll have lots of ions as well. Ions are very, very tiny little things and they're almost useless for us. So, that's the basic principle of making it a colloidal silver electrolytically. And everybody goes on and on about the parts million, but this, it, this demonstration I hope is going to clarify why parts per million is not relevant to you and you don't need to know about it. You do need to consider particle size, that's very very important, but we'll come to that after we've negated the usefulness of parts per million. So here we have, for the purpose of this demonstration, two identical beakers and let's imagine, I know they're not one litre beakers, they're in fact two litre beakers, but for the purpose of this demonstration let's imagine they're one litre beakers which means they would hold 1,000 mils. Okay. And here we have two sugar cubes. Okay, they're about a mil in volume each. So if I put each one of those in there, right, they both have one mil volume of sugar cube in this instance, which is equivalent to one in a thousand, okay? So you both agree to me, everybody would agree that these two beakers are identical. They both contain one part per thousand, which if you want to be technical, is a thousand parts per million, but let's just stick with the one part per thousand, otherwise I'm going to confuse you. So I'm going to take one of those sugar cubes, the one mil, I'm going to do this with it. I'm going to put it in a pestle of water and grind it up. Now I'm going to put it back in the beaker. It is still one part per thousand, but look how many more particles there are in it. One particle, Tens of thousands, probably millions of particles in there. So there's the same concentration, it could be 10 parts per million, but how different are they? They are profoundly different and that's what's important, okay? So when we're considering our colloidal silver, we need to consider the quality of it, not the parts per million. Now the ions in the colloidal silver, which we will produce electrolytically, are pretty useless because as soon as they are presented to our bloodstream, the chlorine atoms in our bloodstream will negate the, so the silver atoms. They'll join together and actually negate one another. So the silver ions have no use to us at all. It's the little tiny particles that we want, these things, the little tiny particles. And what these little tiny particles do is surround the single cell organisms and suffocate them. Technically, they block their electron transport chain. Don't want to get too scientific now. So let's stick with the plot so far. So how do we establish how the, or what the quality of our particles are like. There's, there's two ways we could do this in science. One is we could look at them with an electron microscope. Very, very expensive, very long-winded, and actually it's not going to happen. It would put the price of colloidal silver up too much. Two, we could filter it through a defined size particle filter and take the filters, all the particles out say, at 0.22 microns. However, again, that's going to be expensive, and actually I've got a much better way of doing it. What we do here, a good vitality, and I don't think anybody else does in the world, is we actually assess the effectiveness on the colloidal silver on a bacteria. We actually do what's called a microbiological assay. After all, what we're interested in is how effective is the colloidal silver at killing off organisms. That's what we're using it for, after all. So we need to know how good is that colloidal silver we're producing going to be at killing off a bacteria. So what we do is we take a series of culture tubes that look like this. Now, unfortunately, I can't do this on camera because it has to be done in sterile conditions. Each one of these culture tubes contains a nutrient media. And what we do is we take a bottle of colloidal silver and we've used several high street versions to compare it to, and we dilute it. So we might put one, one mil in there, which would be a one in 10. We take one out of that to 
another one in ten which makes it one in a hundred and so on and so forth. I'm going to put a picture up on this video to show you uh, uh, the end result of a microbiological assay. And you can actually test at what dilution level the colloidal silver is no longer able to kill E. coli. We use E. coli here because it's a standard reference organism. And that gives you a very clear idea of what the particle quality is like because it shows you how easily it will kill the E. coli. Now the E. coli that we actually, um, uh, so the, the colloidal silver you can produce with your zappers and your colloidal silver makers you buy from us, this yellow stuff, will kill E. coli approximately 40 times more diluted than the stuff you can buy in the high street shops. We were going to put all the information up on the website, but I don't think that's fair about compa comparison. What we might do in the future is do a YouTube of an actual live microbiological assay comparing several different brands. But I have to say the stuff you make fresh is always going to be best, and uh, our stuff is never kept on the shelf for more than a month, so you're always buying very fresh supplies from us. So I hope that clears up why parts per million are not relevant. What matters is the particle size and how good those particles are at killing off bugs. That's what you want. Any questions? Okay, well I hope that solves it for you and I hope nobody ever asks me about parts million again. I'd be very grateful. If I had a pound for every time somebody asked me that, I'd retired a decade ago. Okay, thanks. <laughs>